thank you for this great day in our life. We give you praise. You are lifted up, Jesus. You are exalted in the beauty of your holiness. And in the greatness of your excellency, we adore you. We bow before your throne and give you the glory that befits you, Lord. The glory due to your name. I had long for an encounter with you. Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most precious name, we give our worship. In Jesus' most precious name, we worship. Amen. Can you be seated with joy? You are blessed. This is a special Sunday for you, church. By the grace of God this morning, God has prepared a vessel that is going to use to bring you the word of God. But listen to me, I need to say one or two things about it. If you are a young man in the house, today you are going to have an encounter with unusual favor of God. The preacher today, right from age eight, age nine, people that are tall will carry him and he will be preaching and be laying hands on people. And you see a mighty move, right from childhood. And God raised people round about him that were carrying him about and was touching lives across the cities then. And as he finished as a lawyer in the university, he decided he's going to use all his life to serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have him in the house today. When I received a call yesterday that is passing through if I said you must, I mean, just come and touch the ground here. We're waiting for the Lord to touch us. And so with a great joy I have in the house today a servant of God whom I've known from childhood and who by the grace of God is heavily anointed and I know the one, the person you know more in this community is Pastor Sego Baje. They are in the same class there when they were on campus. So it's my joy to bring to you this morning Pastor Sego Iko Menuso to minister to us. You are blessed. Thank you. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Ah, lift your hands to the Lord and give him a mighty shout of praise this morning. Oh, God is worthy to be praised. Lift your voice and give God a mighty, deserving, great shout of praise this morning. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Lift your voice one more time with your hands lifted from the depth of your belly lift out a shout let them know the shout of a king is in our midst and that our God has gone up with a shout our God has gone up with a shout lift the mighty shout one more time give him praise the king eternal the one who was who is who is to come the one who is dateless, ageless, matchless, gracious, glorious, merciful, the God of the army hosts of heaven, the one who commands and he stands sure, the one who is unmoved but he moves, he moves from eternity into time, changing the stories of men, lifting men from the dumb hill, putting them to sit with princes on the earth, God from generation to generation, generation to generation, yet still the same. One more time, lift a shout of praise. Oh yes, you're worthy. Oh yes, you're worthy. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. Age to age, you are faithful and still the same. Dependable, reliable, the only one in whose basket we can put all our eggs. God, 
everlasting. We give you praise. You know, this morning my heart just overwhelms and overflows with gratitude for such a heritage of God's faithfulness, for his kindness to his people. Let's take a minute to just bless the Lord and just honor him and just, just bless him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. No man on earth should give glory to himself. But the glory must be to the Lord. No man on earth should give glory to himself. But all the glory must be. 30 more seconds, lift his praise. No man, no man on earth should give glory to himself. But all the glory he must be to the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. For these are the days of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for even mighty manifestations. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Before we sit down this morning, I know there's a sense in which when we see our pastor week in, week out, there's a tendency not to fully appreciate the extent of a gift that we have and sometimes it takes people like us to say that you are so blessed to receive ministry from such a precious servant of God and let's give him a big hand please. thank you sir thank you sir I crave your indulgence you will do it one more time. But I want to give you context in two or three minutes. There are few people who know my story. Like the father in this house this morning. Few people. And he doesn't just... He's such a man of honor that you will not know how much he contributes to people's lives. It was in the prayer team that he led in the early 90s. That I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And you can clap. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It doesn't matter that I was already preaching. It doesn't matter that I was already doing crusades. But at that crucial time in my life, it was the influence of his ministry that brought me into a new phase. I remember how, apart from my parents, a major prayer influence figure in my life is this man of God I remember vividly how sometimes in run it will just be in normal conversations and it will burst out in tongues and in prayers those things marked us his sense of sensitivity you know I was thinking this one that if he wasn't the pastor over a church and you know the pressure or the responsibility of a pastor is that he has to supply round doctrine. If he could choose just what he wanted, every Sunday you will hear about the Holy Ghost and prayer. Because those are the core things that I remember about him. And he has earned the right to teach about these things as an authority by the quality of his work with God. I can go on and on. Such a quality man. And I remember, you may think we were too young to notice. But in those days in Koiwo, he was a strong pillar of support for my father and mother. Loving, loyal, sacrificial. If my parents could count on anyone, his name would be top on the list. And we remember this. And may God bless you, sir. Thank you. Can you give me a big hand one more time? We celebrate you. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you. I want to celebrate Mama as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We honor you. We honor you. And please help me to celebrate my lovely wife that traveled all the way through this weekend of ministry. We were in Adoe Kitty ministering and there we are privileged to be here this morning. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Father, we thank you for the atmosphere is open to the full influence of your spirit. Cause our understanding to be fruitful at the power of your spirit. Let your word explode in our consciousness at a level that only you can do. Cause our eyes to be blessed to see, our ears blessed to hear, and our hearts blessed to receive accurately and perceive correctly. We give you praise, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Sorry I kept you standing. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I will run swiftly through what God has put in my heart this morning, and I'm grateful for the privilege, a true privilege, to stand and bring the word this morning. I love the Holy Ghost, and I know he loves me more. So it's a privilege to be sharing this morning on the, the ministry of the Holy Ghost. If you're familiar with the writings of Paul, there is a part of it that we have adapted as the end of every service. And people are afraid to go home sometimes of, until they've shared the grace. And they say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. And sometimes the power of truths can be lost when we reduce them to cliché. And so if you go over it slowly, you will realize that what we share as the grace at the end of the service introduces us by revelation to certain critical aspects of the Trinity. So the love of God is the motive. It's where everything began. It's why Jesus Christ came. There will be no grace of the Lord Jesus Christ if the love of God didn't reach out and just go out of his way to make a way for man to be connected to God. So even the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is premised on the love of the Father. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is important because it translates the love motive of God into an active possibility in our lives. Have you met people who are always quick to say, I love you so much. I wish I could bless you. I love you so much. I remember a classmate of mine when we were in, on campus here, very funny guy. Any small thing, if you thank him, he will say, Kini Motishi. Ah, Professor Mewa Fuen. At that time, Tinubu was the Lagos state governor. Professor Mewa Fuen, Tinubu Nyoti Sawo. So every time he said it, I realized that even if he meant well, there was a handicap on delivering good intentions. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is what made the love of God reachable to us in practical experience. Jesus paid to give us access to the fullness of the goodness of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. However, if you are stuck with just those two, and you don't understand the vital role of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, you will know the love of God as doctrine. You will know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ as doctrine. But you will not have the experience of those two things in your life. Because it is the fellowship of the Holy Ghost that brings us into the experience of both the grace and the love of God. Are you still here this morning? So fellowship is not just, as we say, the gathering of believers in that sense, in the sense that Paul wrote, fellowship is sharing partnership. It means that how much a believer can experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God is dependent on the depth of your fellowship or sharing partnership with the Holy Ghost. So that it is not just words that your pastor taught you. 
It is not just something you read or heard somewhere. Partnership with the Holy Ghost is what brings us into the truth and reality of the grace and the love. That is why Jesus introduces the Holy Ghost to us in John 16, 13 as the spirit of truth. Somebody said the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is not a spirit that accuses you and says you are lying, this is the truth. Because the religious mind can introduce that kind of thought to us. In the Greek, the meaning of the spirit of truth is that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of reality. Or, like Jesus said, he will guide you into all truth. He is the one who takes you into the reality of what is available in God for you and to you. So truth in that sense is how things exist for you in God that you can hear about, that you can talk about, that you can be taught about. But the Holy Ghost is the one that guides us and holds our hands into that reality. And what do I mean by that reality? Not just when you get to heaven you will experience it. But the reality of those truths here and now. Are you still with me this morning? There's a reason I'm going this route so that we will not take too much time and the foundations can be laid. Some aspects of the body of Christ may find it easy to talk down on the ministry of the Holy Ghost. But that is only because they don't know what they are missing if they're not embracing the fullness of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. John chapter 5, verse 19. I want us to put that up. Jesus, John chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can of himself do nothing, but that which he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Next verse. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all. Somebody say all. all. I didn't hear you well. All. all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than this that you may marvel. Let's pause there. What is the context for this scripture? Earlier on in the chapter, Jesus has healed this man who had been bedridden for 38 years. Not only was the quality of miracle special, the manner of the miracle was special. Because what would have been a bit more normal would have been for the guy to eventually get the chance to jump into the pool that was stirred every year at a season. It will still be a miracle, but it will be a bit more normal. Then Jesus walks in and says, there is the principle. I am the person. You didn't hear me. There are five steps to academic success. I am the substance. He said, you search the scriptures because you think in them. You have eternal life. You don't come to me. Leave method, leave formula. The substance exists in me as a reality. It means when I show up, it is no longer about protocols. Don't continue to regret every opportunity you missed. Don't regret every time you blew it for 38 years. Don't regret having no man. Don't regret the uselessness of your situation. I am able and more than enough to make up for every gap in your life by just showing up. Jesus showed up. And the guy got up. And there was a conversation. This is the conversation. Showing us the behind the scenes. Jesus says, you see the things that I do that make you marvel. But the secret to the things that I do is that the son can of himself do nothing. 
except that which he sees the father do. For that which he sees the father do, so does the son also in like manner. So the mystery of miracles is having access to what the father is doing. Are you with me today? The difficult things in our lives become simplified when we are able to see what the father is doing. It means the extent of the supernatural manifestation that every believer will enjoy, not just talk about, but enjoy depends on what? Seeing what the father is what? Without access to seeing, we will grope in the world without hope like the rest of the world. So Jesus could have gotten there and be stuck and said, I wish I could help you. But can you calculate around what time the angel always comes? And I will believe God for you that something will happen. So I wish I could help you. But because he had seen the father had a the limitations in the natural were not a limitation to Jesus. Because in the realm of the father is limitlessness. It is in this world we have scarcity. It is this world that is subject to the law of diminishing return. Where the father is, life is self-replenishing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why Paul said in Philippians 1 verse 19, he said, I want to tell you that I'm assured that this will turn out to my deliverance and salvation through your prayers that will connect me to the supply of the Spirit. Because at the supply of the Spirit, every limitation and scarcity bows. So the secret is access. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, eyes have not seen. This is where the Holy Ghost comes in. Ears have not heard. It has not entered to the heart of any man what God has prepared and reserved for them that love him. However, if eyes don't see, hear this, if ears don't, if it does not enter to the heart of man, it will be a beautiful reality stored up in heaven for you. And you will suffer in this life like there is nothing in heaven for you. Are you with me? And that is why it is dangerous to embrace theology that puts all the power of truths in the future. Say, in the last day when God, Jesus showed up at the tomb of Lazarus. And the sister was still preaching to Jesus. That I know. That on the last day, Jesus said, what do you think I am? I am the resurrection and the life. If you reduce it to only a possibility in the future, you reduce the value I can bring to you in the now. Are you with me? Are you still with me this morning? So what does God do that helps the believer to live in supernatural reality? The Bible says, however, these things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, has not entered the heart of any man, these things are revealed to us by the Spirit because it is by that revelation that the believer is able to import reality from heaven and make it reality on earth. So if the son can of himself do nothing except that which he sees the father do, it becomes important that the Holy Ghost is non-negotiable because the son cannot see without the Holy Ghost. Are you with me this morning? Are you still following me? The Holy Ghost is the revealer that shows us what the Father is doing so that we are not stuck and stranded in the face of life. So that you are not even stuck at the same formula that produced the same or the last success. You know how it is. That some people, the reason they have platooed is because they can't find a way out. They are stuck to a model. And when life comes at you and is not respecting the model, 
you are as clueless as anyone else. But the Holy Ghost is not limited to models. So what does the Holy Ghost do? He brings reality to you. So that when reality comes to you, reality can be birthed on earth. Do you understand? Can, can you let me know? Do you understand? Am I going too fast? The value of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus said, he is the spirit of truth, it means you can't operate in the reality of the spirit without the Holy Ghost. He now said he's going to guide you into all truths. And that's very important. Because Jesus Christ also said to us that the Holy Ghost wants to show us all that the Father is doing. Or the Father wants to show us all things. And so there are believers who are limited to a scope of reality. Let me say something that is very important. The body of Christ is blessed with abundance of truth. But Satan is sponsoring fractions and factions of truth to limit the experience of believers. What do I mean? The Holy Ghost has been given to guide us into all truths. But in many places, we stay contented with the truth that we have yet touched. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you believe that God can save. But is that all the reality that you deserve to experience? The Holy Ghost is the spirit that guides us into all truths. And one of the ways the devil leaves us at the mercy of of fractions of truth is by dividing the body of Christ into factions. So you hear people say things like, we are the prayer movement. Don't listen to prosperity preachers. They will make you materialistic. Then you hear another side of people. They say holiness. And God is wise. Listen to me. God is wise in giving different emphasis to different ministries. But Paul said the end of it is that in the last days, the manifold wisdom of God will be displayed through the church. So if we shut down some angles of God's wisdom, how will it be manifold? So what does the Holy Ghost do when he comes to you with revelation? He confronts the barriers. So sometimes you are dealing with complications in your life. That are revealing the scope of truth you have embraced. Many times the world advises you to go and get painkillers. But the Holy Ghost uses it as an invitation into more truth. Did you hear what I'm saying? You know what many believers do? They now go and find theological positions that justify their limitation. Did you hear what I'm saying? They say things like, the Bible says that the poor will not cease among you. Did the Bible put your name there? This morning, by the ministry of the Holy Ghost, the territories of truth in our hearts have been expanded. I didn't hear your very good amen. There are things that felt beyond reach, but the Holy Ghost has come this morning to guide you, not just into head knowledge, not just into the talk of it, but into the walk of it. Somebody say loud amen. Amen. There are things that you have heard people testify about that somehow in your mind, because the boundary of your heart is still narrow, you hear those things. Let me tell you, there are people who hear testimonies and they say a young person is driving a class of car and the first they say is that, I get it bad, yeah. Yahoo, Yahoo, the one shit. Prostitution. Because somewhere in their frame of reference, they've not embraced the truth. That God does not consult your age to bless you. But the Holy Ghost comes and begins to confront the limitation with revelation. So like the angel came to Mary. Are you following me? And said something you have never experienced before will happen. And when Mary said how, the angel said the Holy Ghost. That conversation was stretching the scope of what Mary considered possible till that time. 
The difference is that at the end of the conversation, she said, be it unto me. I caught your word. That was the moment her logic gate opened and expanded to accommodate a new reality that you can have child without the seed of man. Are you still here this morning? So are there things you've seen, heard about, that seemed far beyond reach? As long as the Holy Ghost is not on break or on leave, by his ministry, he will hold your hands and lead you into progressive, expanding experiences of truth in your family, in your finance, in your health, in your destiny, in all that touches you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Guys, us into all truth. And let me share a scripture that puts it together. Romans 8. 26. We see practical operations of the ministry of the Holy Ghost. You know, I feel a pulse in my heart to help somebody hearing me. I say, okay, the Holy Ghost. The Father wants to show me all things. Okay, okay. How does this work? Because there's no blessing to just telling you what is possible without helping you get into the reality. The idea that the Father wants to show you all things already suggests that in the wiring of the new creation is the ability to see, to hear, and to perceive. Did you hear what I'm saying? Everything I'm saying this morning will not bless you until you embrace that. Can you hear what I'm saying? And I was going in a different direction. God just said, address that. Because it's one of the ways people are limited out of the experience of truth. And it feels like hearing God is for some special people. And when you look at babas like this, you feel like, where do I start from? But in the very wiring, listen, of the believer is the sense or are the senses at work to access the God realm. That when you become more aware and conscious of it, you will flow in them with more ease as your partner with the Holy Ghost. Can you hear what I'm saying? The believer has eyes in the spirit. I mean, why will God give you natural senses and withhold them from you in the spirit? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Actually, the senses of your spirit man are more perfect than the senses of the natural man. You see perfectly in the realm of the spirit. Your eyes are good. They are working. Your ears. Okay, you're saying, what is this coming from? Lazarus and the rich man. You remember the story? You know, they both died. You remember the story? They left their bodies on the earth. Remember the story? But the rich man was still talking about finger, talking about tongue, talking about thirst without his physical body. It means that the spirit man is capable of perception and feelings. What does that mean? When you as a believer, you got born again. God gave you a new spirit that is quickened and has access to him. So listen to me. You can see. You can hear. You have no disadvantage as a believer. You have working senses. They are available to you. And for those of you hearing me who have been desiring, at the sound of my voice, it becomes activated in your life now. Yeah. I remember I was on campus and one of my colleagues came to me one time and said, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I'm about to decide on the course of study. I've been studying economics. I want to move so nothing. And I want to know what God wants to say. Right there, God spoke to me. As I tried to open my mouth, God said, don't tell him what I've told you. I want to talk to him. Because that is how dependent believers are made. They do not know or even trust that they have senses that can access the realm of God. So I told him, God is going to speak to you. He had this disappointed look on his face that if God could talk to me, why would I come to bother you? If you don't want to help me, just tell me. I said, to help you, just fast for three days. 
at the end of the day, let me know what God has told you. On the third day, he was excited to come and meet me. Very cheerful to let me know God didn't tell him anything. I said, no, 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 no. God spoke to you. He said, no. I said, he said, Pastor, I knew that it would be difficult. That's why I came to you. I said, did you even have any dreams? He said, yes, one dream like that. I was on a queue, and I wanted to just shunt the queue, but there was a ditch somewhere. I said, ah, what does that mean? Stay on the queue. He said, eh. I said, yes. God wants you to continue with the course you are currently studying. I said, as a matter of fact, God told me the day you spoke to me, but I wanted you to begin to practice the use of your senses because the son can of himself do nothing except that which he sees the father. Are you here? Are you here? So our life here is a response to revelation. So where did I say we should go? Romans 8. I'm rushing, trust me. <laughs> Romans 8, 26. Likewise, and we're going to juxtapose it with 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I believe that some of the most powerful writings of Paul on the things of the Spirit, some of them, 2 Corinthians 3, 4, 5, very powerful truths about the things of the Spirit. I know many of you are familiar with the one with the nine gifts and all of those things. But these ones are helpful with operations. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'll take a minute to pause and explain. Are you still here this morning? Help me know you are here. Help me know. Are you still here this morning? Yes, Encourage my, my ministry. Are you still here this morning? Yes, this scripture reveals that as long as the believer is in the flesh, he will be tempted with limitations and weaknesses. Are you with me? <laughs> but the good news is that there is provision for the believer in the spirit. So, we enter certain situations in limitation. And if nothing tells you to pray like this, then nothing will tell you to pray. If a believer is experiencing limitation in prayer accuracy, it shows that even in naturally solving the problem, he already encountered limitations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For him to say even for what to pray, I'm struggling to be accurate, it means in his natural wisdom, the capacity to solve the problem does not exist. So even in prayer, he gets there, realizing I am still experiencing limitations. Remember what I said about guiding into all truths. So there's a boundary. There is a limitation. And then the Holy Ghost comes in and helps. The word help, uh, weaknesses in the Greek means he comes to our side and holds our hands to confront the limitation. Or let me paint a picture. Imagine this circle is the boundary of your life. And every time you get here, you bounce on the wall and you hit, and it hits you back. You get here. Limitations, infirmities, and weaknesses. Are you with me? The Holy Ghost now holds your hands. Together with you, he begins to push back the boundary that held you in limitation. And that sounds like the Holy Ghost guiding you into all truth because it is from one measure of reality to another, to another, to another, beyond what you've known before. Are you with me this morning? He holds your hands. And what are you doing at that time? He's working utterances that your mind can't handle because of limitation. So the natural tongue is limited. 
That is why in Acts 2.4, the Bible says, And they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It means there is this tongue, there is the other tongue. This realm is limited, that realm is not. The language of tongues is the language of limitlessness that is giving you access to truth. Am I going too far? Don't worry, I'll round off so, so shortly. But this is crucial. He holds our hands. What is he doing? The Holy Ghost. Let's read. Let me help you so that you don't lack of the Spirit helps. We cannot be uttered. Next verse. Next verse 27. Now he searches the hearts and knows what the mind of the Spirit is, makes intercession for the saint according to the will of God. It means we fall short in their natural strength. The Holy Ghost puts the language of truth in our mouth when we are praying in tongues. What is truth? The will of God for you as it exists in God's realm. You can't know that in your mind. But the Holy Ghost begins to pray that will through your vocal cords in a language you don't know as though you know the will of God. Holding your hands into accuracy. Stretching the boundaries of limitation in your life. I want you to rise your feet for a second. And for 30 seconds, just pray in the Holy Ghost. And experience the Holy Ghost. Holding your hands and hitting targets of accuracy in the will of God through your vocal cords. Guiding you into all truth. He's praying the reality in heaven out through your vocal cords. That's the Holy Ghost holding your hands, supplying what is missing, rubbishing your limitation. You have 10 more seconds praying the Holy Ghost. He's holding your hands. Jobariam paski frita. Joboriam boste prike. Jombirian gasta prati. Zoblika natane sote. Ekruma na bisto sila hati. Baketelosi. Ekendada stolia. Ekrika salabayata. Two more seconds. Baradegete komalia labaye. Vekendi dikaske. Bamboste rege de bokos. Hemba le komba biragana mambande bongu de galia labande. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are afraid. Keep your eyes on me for a few minutes. I'm rounding off. If this is all that happens, it will be great. But it will not be a blessing to the world. That is why the next verse shows us the impact. Many of us don't read it in connection. In fact, many believers quote it as a pacifier when things have gone wrong in your life. They say, ah, God makes me know that all things work together for good. That means you got robbed because you were not sensitive to the Holy Ghost. You are not using scripture to pacify yourself. Are you getting what I'm saying? No. The opposite is actually the implication of that scripture. That based on what the Holy Ghost has done, holding your hands, and making you hit accuracy in the realm of utterance, in the realm of the spirit, the Holy Ghost now has ex he has permission to enter your experiences and work things out according to the truth that you have prayed without your mind knowing it, because your mind was limited. So the original language, the Greek, means that God orchestrates. That's the meaning. It's not just if you think that's the way the world works all things just gather together and discuss and they say they want to work together for you it never happens the systems of this world are anti-god it takes intelligent deliberate orchestration by the spirit for things to align for the believer so when you have prayed truths in the spirit when it is time to experience truth in your life the way the holy ghost helped you in utterance is the way he's going to help you into manifestation so what it means is that the holy ghost has taken permission from the truth you uttered listen and it goes into the systems of the world he's pulling factors he's pulling time
timing. He's pulling opportunities and he's nudging you at the same time. So that at the end of the day, all of you collide at an intersection. People say it is coincidence. But if you are smart enough, you know you didn't even know what to pray for as your heart. So this could not have been coincidence. What am I teaching you this morning? For every believer, you have two trips of truth. The first trip of truth is when the Holy Ghost brings the revelation in the realm of the Spirit. The second trip of truth is when he makes the truth you saw in the Spirit a manifestation. So the first one is in Romans 8.26. The second one is in Romans 8.28 orchestrating all things that your timing mysteriously aligns and they say how and it reminds me of Isaiah 45 thus said the Lord who is anointed to Cyrus whose hand he has held you didn't just show up because you are smart whose hand he has held to subdue nations before him to loosen the loins of kings to open the two lift gates and they will not be shut why the spirit of truth is guiding you into reality first by revelation in the spirit and then by manifestation in your experience and we can have both every time the son can of himself do nothing except that which he sees the father do so the first contact of the son is seeing it happen with the father the second contact of the son with truth is when the son is doing it likewise in the same manner what he has seen the Father do. The spirit of truth guiding us into all. Somebody say all. There is more than what you've touched. Somebody say more. There is more than what you've seen. Somebody say more. You've had testimonies. But the prophet told the widow. Said gather vessels. Pour not a few. As you pour oil into one. Once it is full. Set it aside. Because there is more. The Holy Ghost should not be stuck. In one truth in your life. He can guide you into all. Is anyone thirsty this morning? I remember as we go to pray. Many years ago God gave me an assignment. And I was intentional. About not sharing as many testimonies this morning. So that the attention is on the word. And not on me. I'd been in this town, Ondo town, earlier on. I had had a massive crusade. And there was a season in my life God was sending with an instruction. And I knew, you know not what to pray for as you ought. I saw my limitations. I was no longer seven years old. I didn't have the contact of the big people in the city who hosted the crusade. I mean the Olori, the Oshema, where everybody was there. Massive crusade. And I needed access for what God wanted me to do. So I was praying in tongues. Listen, many of us ignore our limitation until it embarrasses us. Instead of you to say this thing, I should take it to God. For the spirit of truth to guide me, you are making 10 calls in one minute. You are doubling effort. You are saying, let me double my hustle. You will be frustrated because life does not respond to all those things. So I got praying. Until I broke into peace. So I'd seen the truth in the spirit. Didn't know how to work out. I couldn't go to the palace and say, by the way, I'm the person that came to preach. You will look stupid. That's not how we do God's work. All of a sudden, one day I was visiting my cousins in Ibadan. Their house was not too far from the International Gospel Center of Government. I go to the door. Are you with me? I was going to knock. And I came under the influence of the Spirit. It was as though I lost my senses. And I kept walking. And I found myself walking towards the International Gospel Center. I had no appointment with anybody. I didn't have GSM. Nothing in the physical made sense about... I was walking like a zombie. But listen, when the Holy Ghost is holding your hands against the infirmity, your part in partnering is yielding. That is why you yield with your vocal cords. And I'm a yekatalia. When the, when, the, when the tongues rise, you don't rationalize. You yield. No matter how ridiculous it makes you look, you yield. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You yield. Because the same way you yield in that place is the same way you will yield into manifestation. One instruction. As I was just going, I got to the front of the church. Mind you, I was looking stupid. Ah. 
may you be willing to be stupid enough to see the things of the Spirit work in your life. Somebody was parking as I was getting to the entrance of the church. She came out of the car. She is the wife of the person who single-handedly sponsored the crusade we did years ago. She was more happy to see me than I was to see her. The rest, they say, is history. The orchestrations of the spirits. The orchestrations. I want to pray in tongues. I want to unleash you to pray in tongues. And I want to pray as though you are confronted with infirmities and limitations. And you are aware that all your help is in the spirit of truth. That if the spirit of truth can get a hold of your hands, he will rubbish the limitation in front of you. What your sense cannot surmount. By my God, I run through a troop. Through my God, I leap over a wall. Can you lift your voice? Partner with the Holy Ghost. Yield your vocal cords. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray some more. He can be. Hareba Sande, he sola mande, ajila madande, he soro bokonde, halika tabali ati soria na mande, he le soli pandi grasta, ligro balikas, he kele manendo kwa iba kita bi na na mani kita ligangish, o boro godo ke sekiti baika, o pam pam bim pam gidi gidi gaga, e fuku pakida koloteli adi, ombrazali adi. Let the boundaries of your life, the boundaries of your heart, the boundaries of truth in your experience, let them be shifted. God is fighting for us. He's pushing back the darkness. He's lighting up the kingdom. He's pushing back the darkness. He's pushing back the darkness. He's pushing back the darkness. Engage the ministry of the Spirit. Engage the ministry of the spirit it has pleased God that through the foolishness of the things of the spirit the foolishness of the gospel men are saved delivered from harm from danger through the ridiculousness of the things of the spirit you're not speaking to the air you are dealing in spiritual realities the Holy Ghost is holding your hands Pushing back the boundaries. As you enter more in the spirit, you enter more in your experience. The boundaries are being shattered, limitations are being broken, infirmity is being rubbish. The supply of the spirit of Jesus. The supply of the spirit of Jesus. Can you pray some more? He comba hariga batonga yata ali kabari bakamba basta sali anahati ejeje sukuka boko borodo boko bobongo pang panda etukwa zapa pangata the Lord says danger is being averted danger is being averted danger is being averted in vain is a net spread in the sight of a bird you will not walk into it danger is being averted in vain is that net spread in the sight of a bird except the bird cannot see it your eyes are opening you are singing you are singing you are avoiding you are avoiding you are being saved the ransom of the lord has kabalate he sonda paliate shekete bokos heleke de bokos one more minute somebody just needs one more minute to get in somebody just needs one more minute to get in somebody you are around it you just need one more minute to get in hagas kata babala das kata jele barada gas kata panda las kata hadiga liga harade go de bonde papambe odokoto arebo soto likewise the spirit also helps our infirmities ekabashanda help us come help us come your hands have been held your hands have been held help us come Help us come. Help us come. 
you are being helped you are being held you are being helped you are being held you are being held your hands are held you are being held your hands are held you are being held your hands are held lift your voice 30 more seconds hey Kasta there's more to you than where you are now 30 more seconds Hakala Baria Masade Hebrosodia La Bayada Elo Procostus Ecoba Libranos Here de Boconamos Harabali Cobolocos Para de Gebocotos Para de Geleboro de Cos Para de Gemboco Papembo Co Hascapa Malecopos Elebo Ekele Mopalia Cali Obama Salia Opalia I see the Holy Ghost entering a meeting room on behalf of somebody conversations about you decisions about you have been hanging but the Holy Ghost has gone into the room with your name wearing your face working out favor in the next few weeks to get your good news the decision is now in your favor the Holy Ghost Araba Shanda Pada la Kanda Pa Higate Gamande Papampas Eke Boria Baleste Ke Ebolos. I keep hearing God say, Allow them to stretch a little more. Some need to get in. Allow one more minute. I hear the Lord say, David's are arising by the power of the Spirit. David's are arising by the power of your Spirit. By the power of the Spirit. David's are arising on conventional method in battle but victory every time Osaleke Bande too young for the big stage but victory every time nobody thought you have a chance but victory every time you are despised and you look disadvantaged you are a young person David arise oh the Holy Ghost is working oh the Holy Ghost is working Oh, the Holy Ghost is working. 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 Oh, Holy Ghost is working. Woo! Thank you, Father. Keep the tongues. Keep the tongues under your breath. You've gained mileage. Keep the tongues under your breath. Don't lose momentum. I want to invite you, sir, to please come on the sacks. Uh, like I saw the picture of the clouds rising earlier. And the Lord said, after you've brought them the word, help everyone to enter into the cloud. Let me tell you something. It is dangerous. Don't stop praying in tongues. It is dangerous to have an intellectual church. You know why? You will be too rational for the Holy Ghost. There is a reason the things of the Spirit look ridiculous. It is so that you can depend on the one whose wisdom you don't have. Despite not prophesying, quench not the Spirit. In any place where the things of the Spirit are despised, because it looks ridiculous, the Spirit is quenched. The manifestation of the Spirit disappears. So I want you to get past all the block in your... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That the Lord said I should tell you, but I was building up to. Let me just tell you and trust that God will give you capacity to understand. Listen. The big thing that you want to see in your life is too big.
for the logic gate in your mind. The same way the things of the spirit is looking too ridiculous for the logic gate in your mind. Are you with me? If you will open your logic gate to the spirit of truth and get over the feeling that these things of the spirit, people all the power is ridiculous, unity of the spirit is ridiculous. When you open that logic gate, that great thing you couldn't pull by yourself will also follow the ridiculousness of the holy of the things of the spirit to enter the logic gate and enter your life. Did you hear what I just said? Do you understand? We're going to lift our hands and in three minutes, reckless abandon and dependence on the Holy Ghost. If you want to pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you want to sing in the Spirit, just three minutes. I'll be done here max in six minutes. The songs are your spirit. But don't wait for him. Let your heart ascend. Yes.
mighty, oh, you are mighty. Fire candle, mighty, mighty, mommy, you are mighty. You are not just mighty, you are almighty. They do marry Tokari, I yell, you are mighty. Oh, Bala, do job, and Bobo, you are. Okay, toga, 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 In a few seconds, you are about to experience the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Not just in teaching, but in experience. This is what the Lord says. I am about to lift people out of limitations. Makarabaya. Listen, listen. Makandeliga. Do we have ushers? Do we have ushers? You're going to help people because the power of God is about to lift people out of limitations. For some of you, even if you are sitting down, the sign you will see is as though something is lifting you. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. It is the ministry of of the spirit i can't waste time explaining it to you when you see it you know it lift those hands to heaven and lift them high the god of all possibility the one with whom is no limitation the god of all flesh with whom nothing is difficult he has entered your circumstance he has entered your matter This is strange. The Lord said, tell everybody whose hands are lifted to look at you as you pronounce. So I know you are praying. Please pardon me to just follow the Holy Ghost. As I declare, keep your eyes focused on me. Peter said, look on us. Keep your eyes here, but keep your heart on the Lord. Father, I come by the power of the Spirit and I declare your word. Whether it is a limitation of sickness or a limitation in a circumstance where the person has not been able to move forward, particularly about seven people, it feels like the promotion is stuck. There's someone it is a family situation you have done everything but you are struggling in your family there's somebody here you've gotten a diagnosis God is about to reverse it wherever you are let me stand here so you can see me Father in the name of Jesus by the power of your spirit 
let everyone under the sound of my voice from the front to the back from the choir to the right to the left let them come under the lifting power of the Holy Ghost bringing and pulling people out of the mighty clay set it yes 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 that's it I just help them one two three four five six that's it that's it that's it Kalate Korea Basita Help Touch Touch Yes, 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 yes All over Whatever was holding you Is losing you Whatever was holding you Bring them here Bring them here Whatever was holding you Is losing you as you hear me, the arrow of God's lifting power is finding you. Yes. Aha. Kanatalia Daba. Yeah. In the next seven seconds, angels of God, touch. We want to see the rest. You can not be the same again. This is your appointment with destiny. Thank you, Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. There's a huge cloud here. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Yeah? 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 Yes. 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 There's an angel beside the lady in that native. Help her. Surebokina paria basote poliadaya. Now, everybody. You are going to enter your lifting with a shout. <laughs> Loose. <laughs> if you can still afford some composure. <laughs> I feel the energy of the Holy Ghost. You're going to lift a shout of hallelujah with everything within you. And the limits are breaking. Are you ready? One, two. Usher, spare the lot. One, two, go. Yeah, yeah. Find them. 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 Yes. 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 Aha! 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 Hey, Kodiaba! Yes! There's somebody here you have, I don't know if it's your daughter. I see a girl between eight and between six and ten. The enemy has set the enemy has set something like an abuse. But the arrow of God's deliverance has gone forth. And the matter will come out. God is still touching. God is still touching. This lady here. Come. You've been around it. It looks like it is here. And then it like, it's like the cloud lifts. And it's like you have to wait again. You've been around it. Today you enter it. Lift your hands to heaven. Touch! The limit is broken. Where's this person? There's a limitation on your neck. A limitation on your neck. Where's the person? It's your neck. It's your neck. It's your neck. It's your neck. I'm feeling it. God is still touching people. Where's the person? It's your neck. Wave at me where you are. The person with the neck stiffness. 
discomfort in the neck. Come, 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 run, run, run. That neck, the limit is, yeah, look at me. The arrow of God's deliverance has come to you. Now, from the crown of your head, the power of God shall help her, help her. Somebody stand behind her. Somebody stand behind her. The ear, you neck, you hear me? I loose you. Yep. 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 Yes, there's one traveling around the neck. That's it. There's somebody else. You've been struggling with the side of your body. One side of your body, in particular, sometimes your hand loses power. Where's the person? One side of your body is struggling, but sometimes you just see, even if you are carrying something, it's as though you have lost power in that hand. Where's the person? Where's the person? I didn't say you should leave her. You neck. Loose. There's somebody else. You had an attack in the night. You saw yourself coughing. And you were coughing blood. You saw yourself coughing and you were coughing blood. I send the arrow of God's deliverance. Help me look for this person. Right there where you are. I loose you from that lie. One, two, three. Loose. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Loose. Loose. Heriman Taya. Friko Paria. There's somebody here. Only about a week you were discussing with somebody about not understanding what is happening, where your money is going. Where's the person? It's not more than a week. You were in a conversation and you were saying, I don't, what the Lord showed me is a basket that you were putting water into. You were discussing or thinking to yourself and say, I can't explain where the money is going. Please don't be ashamed. This is an operation of the Spirit. Wherever you are, wave your hand. The Lord has sent me to you. Wherever you are, wave. please, please come. Run. The enemy cannot, cannot plague this one. Let not the rod of the wicked rest upon the lot. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. You can't stay there. No, you can't. Loose. And everything you have lost, I see it's like you are bleeding. A necruba nesita. Restore. There's somebody. I see prayers hanging over your head. I don't know your parents, but I see prayers hanging over your head. I see prayers hanging, hanging, hanging. Upon the sotonia. I literally felt a sword of God's power when I stood before you. Prayers and words that have been hanging for years by the word of these prophets, they find expression in your life. From today, the first fruits of the manifestation begin. I move you out of the ordinary. There's a lady here. You have a problem with your menstrual flow. Maleke paria koli mai azuru malete. There is somebody in particular. You have like a swelling in your lower abdomen. That area. It's like there's a swelling there. Do you have that? There's somebody. Yes. Restore. Even now, Jesus makes you whole and your spirit of infirmity let her go it is the visitation of the Lord touch it touch the place the fire of God is going to visit you okay Rabbi Kosiata, 
again. Out. You can't stay there. Out of her. Loose her. Even this second. Yes, there's fire there. Just put your hand here. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow. I'm about to drop the mic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There's somebody here. You've had this thing. You're about to make a presentation and you go blank. It's not once. You, you're about to make a presentation and you just go blank. Or you are in a conversation and you can't find yourself. Where's the person? Run forward. Run forward. That arrow will not prosper. Where's the person that I said one side of your body? Sometimes you feel like you're even losing strength. Shh. Come, sir. Restore. Never again. Yeah. 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 It's like there's cool breeze on your head as I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's the power of the Lord. Never again. Please help him sit down there. God is not done. Just sit down there. Just sit down there. Where's the other person? Touch. Restore. Where's the other person? You too. Touch. Restore. Next person. Touch. Restore. Touch. Restore. Touch. Restore. Yeah, every nerve. Hear me. Every joint. Hear me. Come alive. Now. Yeah. By the communication of the power of the Holy Ghost. There's somebody here while I was talking to you. You had a journey into a dream. Where you were attacked. While I was talking here. It was like you were taken into a dream where you were attacked. The Lord says I should confirm your deliverance. If that is you, step forward. <sighs> Leave her now. Power restored. Power restored. Fully. Rembo <sighs> Saikandai. Restore. We give you praise. Restore. Restore. You foul spirit of affliction. You have no right and access to this body. So as you hear me now, you obey me. Let her go. angels of the Lord are working reversing every smell of disaster oh, thank you father everyone because of our time lift your hands to heaven and give God praise as I'm talking to somebody you've been having serious itching in your ear you've been having it for a while it leaves you now in the name of Jesus and that ear is restored to full hearing capacity now we can't take testimonies now but give God praise for what God has done for you thank you for the mighty decision thank you Lord. thank you thank you Hallelujah.
That's what my song will be. Are you there? Amen. That's what my song will be forever. From today in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. From today in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, go. From today in the name of Jesus. I embrace the ministry of the Holy Ghost. And I enter into the realm of possibilities. Oh my God. Can you say it better? Believe it. Can you say from today? In the precious name of Jesus, I embrace the ministry of the Holy Ghost and I enter. And I enter. Are you there? And I enter into the realm of possibilities. In every engagement, in every step I take, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Man, I declare you are moving to the realm of possibilities. Limitations are removed from your life. In the name of Jesus. And this very week, the Lord will prove it to you. It will become a sign for you. In your family life, it will become a sign. Where you work, it will become a sign. In your academics, you have a sign. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can I have a better amen? I declare the week open for possibilities in your life. In the name of Jesus. In every direction you turn this week, the Lord bless you. The Lord advance you. The hand of the Lord cause you to flourish. Great grace rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, we lift up your son, your servant whom you have used today. We declare you remain relevant forever. The fire of God, the grace of God on your life keep expanding in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord carry you into realms beyond your imagination. In the name of Jesus. You have watered us as a church. We declare you watered. We declare you blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You are blessed.